Hey, hey, who's ready to paint some checkerboard, checkerboard pattern. So um, we have already painted this nightstand in two coats of tea rose. We've used Dixie Belle tea rose. All we did was we cleaned it really well with white lightning, dried it, and then we used two coats of tea rose. We did not prime, we checked for bleed through. We weren't gonna have an issue. So um, we're moving right along. We're gonna do this inset right here in the checkerboard pattern. I get asked this a lot. There's more than one way to do it. You can use a stencil. You can tape, measure and tape it off, draw it off, I'm sorry, stencil. You can measure and draw it and paint it by hand, which is actually my pref preferred way to do it. Or you can tape it off and that seems to be something that a lot of people wanna know about. So that's what we're gonna tackle right now in this live. So the very first thing that we need to do is um, decide what colors we're gonna do our checkerboard in. For me, it's always black and white or a version of black and white. Right now I'm gonna use two softer tones, which is Sawmill Gravy, and I'm also gonna use Gravel Road, which is like a deep gray with a brown undertone to it, and Sawmill Gravy is exactly what it says. It's like um, a gravy. These are all by Dixie Belle. So I'm going to do my base coat on the back of this inset right here in Sawmill Gravy. You usually wanna do your lighter color first, and then do your darker checkerboard color second. So I've got a small brush and a large brush. So I've got a small brush like this that I'm gonna use to get up close and around my edges here. You can use an angled brush if you want. This is just a flat one inch brush, craft brush. And then I've got my flat mini Dixie Belle synthetic brush that I'm gonna actually use when I fill in. So I'm just gonna start by dipping my brush just a little bit in my sawmill gravy. And I'm gonna get right up here in the corners, just like so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring that all the way down. Now I could do this with a larger brush if I wanted to, but um, this will keep it from getting on the edge of that, uh, the frame. And then we don't have to go back and retouch that up. So just like this, I'm gonna do this around all four sides, paying attention to that corner. And then what you do wanna do before you move on, because chalk paint does dry really quickly, is you wanna go over wherever you've got an edge and smooth it out really well. Just, I call it feathering it out, just feather out your edge so that you don't have a large buildup there. And you'll go in and fill it all in here in just a minute. So um, let's move on to all sides. Okay, so we framed it out with a small brush and now we just wanna fill it in. So I'm gonna use my spritzer bottle here, my mister bottle, just give a light spritz to the middle, very, very light. Same thing, missed my brush just a little bit, dip just a little bit, the tip of my brush in and then go ahead and start filling in here. And remember, this is just the background for the checkerboard. It does not have to be perfect, but you also don't want it to be super, super thick. Um, and you want to use as much water as you can without it running because the fewer brush strokes that you have, the fewer, uh, the less chance that the paint is going to run underneath your tape. If you've got a lot of brush strokes, they kind of create like roads in your paint and then tape will tra uh, paint will travel underneath the tape and follow the lines of that roads and road and then you end up with uh, more little tiny, tiny uh, bleed through. Nice and wet, and then just filling it in, going back lightly, just like that. Very light with my brush, and now I'm gonna let that dry, and once that's dry, I'm gonna come back and show you how to tape it off. The feet on this piece actually already have built-in stripes, so I'm definitely gonna be using Gravel Road and Sawmill Gravy to do that. So right now they have a base coat of T-Rose. Let me show you down here on the bottom. Now I will, when I actually work on this piece, I'll turn it upside down and finish out the feet that way, but just for right now, I wanna show you that I go ahead and put a coat down of um, Sawmill Gravy. I'm gonna go ahead and cover the entire thing, even though I know that only every other Every other piece is going to be sawmill gravy, but I go ahead and cover the whole thing. And then that way, when I go back with the gravel road and the dark color, I don't have to worry about any of the pink from underneath showing through 
around the side of my stripe. So I'll just continue this all the way around. And like I said, when, uh, when I actually am finishing and doing detail on these, I'm gonna turn this piece upside down and I'll work on the feet like that. But I am gonna put my base coat on right now in Sawmill Gravy. Okay, so we're ready for checks. We've got our base coat down in Sawmill Gravy and we're ready to do checks. It doesn't matter what color you're using, um, but I usually tend to go with some form of black and white. Um, so I do not, you can use whatever size tape that you want, but I prefer to go with the, this, they call it one inch, but it's not actually exactly one inch. I prefer to go with the smaller tape, smaller checks. I feel like it's more whimsical looking. If you use the wider tape, you get more done in a quicker amount of time. But to me, it looks like a racing flag check and I don't want it to be like a big, bold racing flag check. So I use this or if I'm gonna draw it out, I use a ruler. So this is a clear, just a very clear, flexible ruler and the ruler and the tape are about the same size, see? So you, if you're gonna draw it out, that's another video, another day, but you would, you know, draw your lines this way and this way, and you would hand paint without tape. Tape, taping it is much easier, but it uses a lot of tape, and it's, uh, I don't know, I just don't enjoy it as much, but it is definitely great to have options, and so this is how I do it. I want to make sure that I've got enough tape to go all the way across and you want to detack your tape. So I usually do this by just putting it across the front of my shirt or on my sweatpants or, uh, you know, if I've got a drop cloth down, I'll detack it on the drop cloth. The tape is really tacky and we're, this tape, this paint I've just done, I just finished it um, and I just don't want it to pull my, my paint because it hasn't had cure time yet. So I just take my tape, I line it up with the top there and I press it in place. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is pull off two small pieces. These are gonna be my spacers. So two small pieces like this, same thing, detack them and then put them in place. So I usually put one on one side just like that and one on the other side. You don't have to press these down really hard, just put them in place like that. And that will space out exactly how far apart your tape needs to be and lay down your next line, just like this, okay? Then press that in place, move, lift your spacer, move it down to the next row. This is the same technique that you would do for stripes. If you were gonna tape off stripes, this is the same exact thing, but this is the first step in the checks process, okay? So I'm gonna continue, continue down. Okay, I forgot that on this piece, I wasn't gonna do the entire thing in checkerboard, so I took a few of the stripes off. But anyway, uh, it's pretty much gonna be like this. I'm just gonna leave this part open over here and this part open over here. Now down here on the bottom, where you will um, be painting up against the edge here, you can take some of your scrap pieces of tape that you were using for spacers, or you can just run a whole other line. Just kind of tape over the edge there. Um, where you're gonna be using the gray in that space so that you don't get it on your pink. If you wanna do that, you can do that. And now we're gonna start taping in the vertical line. So um, I'm gonna tape this line over here first and I'm only gonna go as high as this top piece because I'm not gonna go all the way to the top. But if you wanna fill in, oops, sorry, I forgot to detack it. If you wanna fill in the whole thing, go right ahead and fill in the whole thing. That's what you would do if you wanted to do a checkerboard insert. But I, for some reason, have this idea that I wanna do just a portion of it. So that's it. Same thing, exact same thing you did on the other one. You just make your couple of spacers, detack your pieces of tape, put your spacer up here and your spacer at the bottom. The reason you wanna have one at the top and the bottom is so that you make sure that your tape stays uh, the same with the part from the top to the bottom. You detack. Get it stuck on your, your ruler. So here we go. 
go up like so. Move your spacers and just keep taping all the way across. All right, so now I've got it all taped off just the way I want it. And you just want to go back and run your fingers up and down over your tape. Make sure it's taped down really well in all directions. And then we're going to do what's called burnish. We're going to burnish our tape. So you need to seal the edge of where the tape meets the, the piece of furniture. Um, I know that tape says, you know, it won't allow paint underneath there, but the painter's tape, it just does. It just happens. Um, it's a, like it just happens by osmosis. That's a really fancy scientific term. Um, not really. Uh, so the paint is gonna go where there's room. And if you seal it off with either a clear top coat or the same color as your base coat. So my base coat, I always use my base coat because my base coat's out on the table, clear top coat's over there. I don't wanna get it. So I'm gonna take my base coat and a small brush and I am gonna go and you can use your fingertip. You can use your, you can use a brush, totally up to you. I'm gonna go get a brush right now while I'm talking, I'm just doing this, I'm just using my fingertip. But we're gonna paint the whole entire thing with just one very light coat so that right now that light color is going up underneath that paint, uh, underneath the tape, and it's sealing it off. That way when we go back with our gravel road dark charcoal, it can't go up underneath there because the sawmill gravy has already sealed off that edge. It's called burnish, B-U-R-N-I-S-H. All right, so we've got a tiny one inch brush. We could roll it if you wanted. You could, uh, this just happened to be right here. So that's it. I'm just gonna go here, up and down along each side of the tape. I'm gonna rub in a little bit of this paint on all the edges. Right now I'm focusing on the horizontal line and I'll go back, I'm sorry, the vertical line and then I'll go back and do the horizontal line. That's why you could also roll this if you wanted to. If you're in a big hurry, I tend to just, I don't want to get a roller dirty just to do this. So I'll just do it with my little artist brush here. It does just as good of a job, it only takes a few more minutes. Much easier to clean in my opinion. All right, so now I'm gonna focus on the horizontal line. And I'll just continue this until all edges are covered. Okay, so I have all edges covered. All edges are covered and I'm ready to come back at it with the gravel road, which is the deep charcoal gray. My paint here, you want to make sure that your paint dries really well if you want a super crisp look. I'm not going for a super crisp look. After this is done, I'm gonna be messing it all up anyway. So I'm just moving on. My, I mean, I didn't even change paint brushes. I just sort of rubbed this out onto a paper towel. So my paintbrush still has a little bit of white in it. I'm totally okay with that, or not white, but sawmill gravy. So I'm just using my lid. I'm dipping my brush in. Now I could go pretty heavy, but I'm gonna go ahead and rub a little bit off on the sponge because I'm, I mean, on my paper towel because I'm not sure exactly how deep and dark I want it to be, but I'm just gonna start right here and I'm just gonna start running some sawmill gravy over it just like that. And instead, because I'm doing sort of an organic look, I'm trying to decide how much do I really want to go above that line. I'm not real sure yet, but normally if you were doing the whole thing, you would just cover the entire square. Like this here goes all the way down to the edge. So I'm gonna go all the way down in there. I'm getting some uh, sawmill gravy mixed in at the same time and I'm totally okay with that. Um, if you look closely at, at, you know, this is a very Mackenzie Childs look. And if you look closely at Mackenzie's Childs checks, they're very, uh, they're not uh, all the same. and. They have a very much a hand painted look to them. They've got other colors smeared into them. 
So, um, I don't try to emulate their look. I don't usually add white into mine or add that yellow gold that they put in theirs. I do like that, but I usually just use black and white. But sometimes, just like this, I go ahead and let the white mix in with the dark a little bit. Especially a piece like this that I'm gonna be going for a really organic fill anyway. So this is only half, half of the step. After this, we're gonna take all of this tape off and then we've gotta re-tape in another direction. So that's coming up next. Whoop, too much, too much. Sometimes I start to get a little impatient. I just added way too much paint. All right, over here, I have to be a little bit more careful because I am up against this outer edge. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my brush sideways and get that outer edge done. Just like so. This is why I use a smaller brush as well, just because I can get up against those edges. If I were working on a bigger piece for this, I probably would use a larger brush. All right, so there we go. Okay, it's time to take our first layer of tape off. Um, let's see, you wanna take whatever you put on last um, first. So let's pull, see otherwise it starts pulling each other off like that. So let me take these bottom ones off. Pull this up. All right, so you can see here what's happening. We have just sort of like uh, an every other check pattern, and that's what this first step looks like. And then we're gonna go back and tape over this and do exactly what we just did. We'll tape over it again, we'll burnish again, and we will paint again. So there we go. Now let's add our last set of tape. I had to leave and go to the store and grab some tape. Uh, let's do the whole lines first. So you wanna make sure you have enough tape to go all the way across, detach your tape. Now we're gonna tape over the black. We're gonna tape over the black this time. So let's do this first row. You wanna tape over the black completely. All right, you're gonna, you don't need to space it this time because you already know exactly where your tape goes based on where the black is. So detach, tape right over the black, just like that. We'll do that all, all the way down. All right, we're down to our last two horizontal rows of taping over. One more row left, and then we'll start our vertical rows. Now you might wonder how are you gonna do that when you've already covered up the black, like how can you tell where it is? You can still see through it. It doesn't matter what tape you use. I can still see where, you may not be able to see it here on camera, but I can still see where my black is through the tape. So you just wanna make sure that you have enough tape to go your vertical line, detach your tape, don't forget that part. And let's do a vertical row. We'll do this one right here. My tape's a little bit long. Vertical row, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and tear that at that point. continue this across. I've got three more pieces to do. Okay, so I'm all taped off and now you just want to do the same thing again. Go back, make sure your tape is down really well and now we are going to burnish again in the opposite direction. So I've got my brush here, I've got my sawmill gravy because again that is my base coat and I will just go back and burnish all of it just like this. So 
So don't forget that I'm leaving this and this space empty because of the style that this piece will have at the end. I just wanted to focus on the checkerboard pattern with tape because I don't use it very often. I usually hand paint my squares with a, a ruler and a pencil and a craft brush, but I wanted to share this since I was painting on, I needed to do this quickly for another project that I have going on tonight, a live video, and I thought I would just tape it off and share it with you guys here on YouTube as well. All right, let me keep this up and I'll be back. All right, I've got all squares burnished, B-U-R-N-I-S-H-E-D, burnished. Uh, same brush, didn't even go wash it out, just rubbing it out on my rag. Uh, don't know that my paint is even all the way dry. I'm not worried about it because of the finish. I'm not doing a super clean finish anyway. Um, so now I'm just going to use the lid from my Dixie Belle Gravel Road and um, the chalk paint dries so fast. It's drying like 15 or 20 minutes. Right now it's summer, it's hot in here, uh, so it dries really quickly. So I'm taking my, my brush just like this, wiping off just a little bit on my rag, and I'm gonna go ahead and do this side first over here. And it is mixing with a little bit of the white that is still wet. I'm totally okay with that. all the way down. I don't need it to be perfect. I'm going for a really organic look this time. I'm going to be shading it anyway, so I'm okay with it laying a little bit of white in there. Again, like I said, you could use a larger brush if you want. You could use a roller at this point if you want to, if you're like super high speed, but I kind of like to give an imperfect look to my checks. I kind of like having the brush strokes in there. Um, I like the hand painted look. So that's the beauty of painting is you can make it whatever you want it, whatever you want it to be. But those are definitely options for getting it done quicker or um, more quickly or with a cleaner look. So I'm just gonna follow my squares and we'll take our tape off in just a second. Are you ready? Let me get you over here so you can see a little bit better. Let's wheel this around. Are you ready? Let's see, let's start. Uh, let's start with our vertical pieces. Here we go. Like this. Oh, no sneak peeking. Let's take our vertical pieces off. Ah, you, you peeked. <laughs> It never works perfectly. I mean, my checks are perfect, <laughs> but the detaping is not. Remember, these are imperfect here because I have something else in mind for this design, but look here, we have a very organic. How easy was that, y'all? It just takes a little bit of patience and a lot of tape or you can draw it and hand paint it if you're in the need for a little bit of therapy, which is what I really like to use it for. So there we go. I can't wait to show you the finished product. 